Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my blessed beloveds out there in video land. You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty, and I am Rusty. Um, I ripped my last left contact, so I have to wear my glasses, but you can't really wear glasses when you have to have a lot of light, because as you see, it is very reflective. Speaking of reflective, what did you do over the last six months to challenge yourself to um, thrive a little bit more than you normally would? What are your latest and greatest self challenges? I like to challenge myself. I like to push my own envelope, um, not only to strengthen my resolve, but also I don't wanna have dementia. So I work really, really, really hard at constantly filling my time with learning and reading and certifying and something crazy. Um, I have two certification courses going now and I'm teaching classes and doing the podcast and the YouTube, uh, quite busy actually. But I do it with the intention of not only staying young, but staying visceral and, and vibrant. Um, what do you do? Inquiring minds want to know. You know what? You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty, and I have Rachel Kling on. Rachel, I know that this is our second time at doing this, but second time is always the best, don't you think? Agreed completely, 100%. Who are you? What do you do, and what makes you you? Um, I'm Rachel, and I am a psychotherapist by trade. And uh, by vocation or avocation, I am a, a Naikidoist, a black belt Naikido. I have been training in Aikido since uh, 2000. So talk to us about why you got into Aikido. I got into Aikido basically because I was going through a pretty rough time. And I happened to be going through a rough time in physical therapy school where my instructor said to me, I know you're going through a rough time. I know people here aren't treating you well, and I know you're feeling afraid. And I think if you come to my Aikido class, you'll learn how to deal with fear. And for those who don't know, can I take a moment to explain what Aikido is? Is that okay? So um, for those who don't know, Aikido is a martial art, an enlightened martial art where we don't try to spar or overpower each other, but where we connect and we uh, take a play, uh, an experience that begins uh, with contention and transform it into harmo harmonious relationship and with, with compassion so that you're out of harm's way and the person is disarmed, but also out of harm's way. And in doing so, we become better people and we polish our spirits. So you're basically taking a negative confrontation and changing the narrative by not allowing that negativity to really filter you. You're, you're just That's exactly what we're doing. That's Aikido. And you can do Aikido anywhere, any day. We're doing Aikido right now by connecting in a positive way. Um, anytime someone is coming at you, anytime someone is angry at you or upsetting you, you can say, I'm going to meet this person where they're at. I'm going to connect with them. I'm going to be positive and not allow that negativity. I'm going to let that negativity just sort of roll through me and meet them where they're at and recognize this person is suffering in some way. I don't need to be contentious. I just need to recognize their humanity. There's something that you've said to me in the past where I thought it was really eloquent. You, you said that you're meeting that person in their perspective. Can you expand on that? Yeah, so I'll tell you the story. So when I, um, uh, when I first, my first day in class with this professor who happened to be an Aikido teacher, she was teaching a, a technique where someone was grabbing your wrist. And she said, so your wrist is grabbed. You feel like you can't move, you feel like, you know, you might be scared, you might be angry. So what we're gonna do is see the world from this person's perspective. We're not gonna fight with them. And you move next to them with a, with a Aikido movement called the Tenkan, which means turn in, in Japanese. And so Aikido is about seeing the person's perspective. It's a conversation, not a contest. And in a conversation, you're not really going to be successful unless you're trying to see the person. From, from where, see where the person is coming from. Otherwise, you're just at each other's throats and nobody's listening to anyone. But if you're having a conversation, you're listening, you're meeting the person where they're at and they're listening. And in Aikido, we're helping the person listen. We're saying, 
I, I see that you are grabbing and that your mind is not clear right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't be trying to fight me. But um, I'm going to see the world from your perspective. And in such a way, they relax and they say, oh, this person is seeing the world from my perspective. I don't need to fight I can, because I'm feeling that someone is having compassion for my suffering. So we're going to break it down as usual. We're going to break it down into smaller bits and pieces so that people can chew on your, the reasoning behind the season. And as I understand, you were in a tough, you, you grew up in a tough life. So talk a little bit about that so we can put you into a perspective. So I grew up in an, an abusive home um, and it was, it was a physically abusive home. And then it was also, I grew up in a, in a cult, a cultish environment. It wasn't a, exactly a cult, but it had a cultish feel to it because it was a community of people, small community of people. There were very strict rules. If you stepped out of line, you were humiliated. So I guess I am talking about a cult. Um, <laughs> Just a little, darling. <laughs> so, um, so between that psychological abuse and the physical abuse, I was pretty beat down. You know, I, I had nothing going on there. And that led to a mental breakdown in, in adulthood where I became catatonic. And um, I thought nothing was going to happen for me. I thought I knew that I was smart. I knew I had a lot to offer. And it looked like the only thing that was going to happen for me was I was going to watch reruns of television shows for the rest of my life. So that's what happened to me. And then I, I talk about in my book about how we are always something when in these situations from pretty much all of us, something happens, something comes up, an opportunity comes up, a person walks into your life. That's why I'm always saying to my patients, don't give up. You don't know what's around the corner. It's not right. You just don't know. And the key is taking the opportunity when it is presented to you. I think, and, and, and shoot me if I'm wrong, don't literally shoot me, please, because I'm kind of cute. I'm an Aikiko guy, don't shoot people. I don't shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank God. Um, I, think, I think it's a little deeper than that. It's not, coming from a person with a background of trauma as well, um, there have been a lot of opportunities that I've had in my life, but I was not worthy of right. feeling as though I was capable of, or even if it was real, like there's a right. lot of bullshit that you go through and a lot of con artists and it's hard to weave. Oh, out. yes, 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 yes. I, I feel you. I gotcha. And you don't know, you can't, you can't necessarily um, figure it out. And I, I completely agree that they're, they're, we're missing opportunities all the time because we don't feel worthy. I completely agree. I'm so glad you brought that up. I think what does happen is at times um, we are fortunate to find that person who can pull us out. That most of us who, who do heal, who do recover, who do get to a place of badassery have... Um, found a person that someone has said, you know what, you can do this. You got this. And I'm going to give you the tools that you need. And you're, you're going to take it from here because I know you can do it. I think it's very hard to pull yourself out of something like that alone. I think we're here to be here for each other. And I know that I'm that person for a lot of people. I'm that person for my patients. But you had to evolve into that person, right. taught one sister to another. You, you right. work really hard to get there. And I don't think that Akito was the only tool that you needed. Vehicle, used. yes. Tool. So, no, but Akito was big. Akito was big. But as you say, so I was in a bad way when I found Akito. And when I found Aikido, I didn't just find Aikido. I found love. I found people. And love is what's healing. I don't care if it's um, a song or a cliche. It's, it, is the, it is a fact. But you love have to is. allow it in, and that takes some time. That takes time. You have to be ready. I, I completely agree with you that you need to be ready, and you need to be ready to, um, to receive it. One of the things I talk a lot about in my book is that you know, this idea, well, to receive love, you have to love yourself. But that's not what happened in my 
life. What happened in my life was I went into this discipline feeling totally unworthy, not believing I belonged. And I just found people with so much compassion and so much love for me and, and just so much reinforcement. And Leslie Sensei always saying to me, you, you are a compassionate person, you are an Aikidoka spirit, you are giving, you are loving, you are kind, and you are an Aikidoka by nature. Aikidoka is another word for, for Aikidoist. And just giving me that constant feedback of what a good person I was and just getting all this feedback from this very, from this person in great authority, quite senior to me, who really seemed to have it figured out. She's kind of one of those people who, um, you know, kind of the opposite of us where she was great. She just was really confident from the beginning and just getting that feedback. And then not just from her, but people in the dojo, people in my class, uh, reaching out to me and being patient with me and being kind with me because I came in so awkward. I was so awkward. I had no confidence. People would slow down for me. People would, I'm tearing up as I think about it. We had to set out mats. I couldn't figure out how they went. We, people, we started class a little bit late so they could help me figure it out. And I'm getting choked up because what really healed me, the Aikido really helped me, um, kind of find my groove and develop me to the person that I am today. But the healing was the love that I got from the people in Aikido. It's the love that you gave yourself too, because you had to be willing to stick with it. You had to be willing to, I always say that I'm a Giselle and heals after a few tequila shots. So <laughs> you can imagine that walking up the stairs. Um, you know, that awkwardness is not, anything other than a bundle of nerves and a bundle right. of old triggers that are knocking in your mental door saying, you can't do this. You suck. You're a failure. Right. All of those things that we were told as children. Um, but with patience with yourself, you kept going back. And for that, you were now officially a badass mama. That is true. And that is what people told me. And so one of the things is life is about showing up, right? That's another cliche, but it's absolutely true. And my instructors, I have two main instructors and what would say to me, because I'm, I was slow, right? I was, you know, I'm awkward. I didn't, I'm, I'm not naturally talented on the map. And my instructors would say, just get there, just get there, just get there. You're going to get better. And that's the thing is, is having so many times it's like, I'm just not good enough to be there. I'm slowing everyone down. I'm, I don't belong here. And you j just showing up. And when you push, we were talking at another time about having that inner light, that inner strength, that natural sense of, no, I got this. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to live. I'm a survivor you know, and you just know it. it's in your bones from the beginning. And I never gave up in my life. My life was always about moving forward one foot in front of the other. And it was just that the reward of showing up for Aikido was great because I was always learning more about myself and it was always a healing experience. And you weren't with a bunch of assholes. I mean, you weren't with a whole bunch of kids who were ego driven, hormonally driven and, and competing off of each other like you were in, in that one particular class. Exactly, exactly. And so much, I think a healing experience is so much about environment. And that's one of the things I try to teach my patients is who are, who are you surrounding yourself with that are giving you the messages that you're getting? Are you, and from, uh, you know, I call it, I call people like you and I trauma experts because <laughs> girl, <laughs> but, um, it's very difficult to l trust and allow people into your life. It, it just is. I struggle with that. I'm, I just turned 45. I probably will struggle with that my whole life. Um, it's a big, big struggle. But then to put yourself out there in an environment that your body isn't accustomed to, and you were a dancer, so right. you, you would think that you could move like, no. <laughs> no, Aikido is different. Aikido it's is not very dance. Different. It's very different, and it's, it's, it's so much mental. And I wasn't the best dancer either. It's just that I was always important to me to, to work through my body, to, to be in touch with my body. And then Aikido is a... Is a so many layers and training in Aikido and getting better at Aikido is not, is about, right. It's about mind. It's about developing, polishing your spirit. 
And so you're scrubbing your spirit. Sometimes my, I had a teacher who said, it's like your soul is, you know, on one of those scrub boards every time you're training in Aikido. And so you're not just training in Aikido, you're, you're, you're washing away all, you know, pain and dirt and grime from, from your life and from your inner self. I think that we need to talk a little bit about the history of Aikido. Um, I think it's extraordinarily fascinating when it was available. So, yeah. So Morehiwe Shiba was a, a martial artist um, born in the late 19th century. And um, he was a, a very special person, a high, high level spiritual person, just one of those kind of ascended masters were very lucky to have been gifted by this. Um, and um, after the war, the martial arts that were m more intense had to become more peaceful because he couldn't continue to do the martial arts that he was doing. And he wanted, it wasn't just, oh, well, you know, Japan is not allowing lethal martial arts to do Aikido. It was, I don't want a world of war and I'm going to teach peace. I'm going to teach people to be, to be peaceful and I'm going to teach it through this martial art of Aikido. And so um, the modern day version of martial art is really, of Aikido is really post-war and it's about teaching peace. It's about how, having a world where there is no war, where there is no fighting, where we are just here for each other to facilitate peace and nourishing. So as your student, I, I'm understanding that it's just changing the narrative of the conversation. So you have this ugly, angry person running after you, wanting to beat you up for whatever reason. And you're just like, nah, not today. That's perfect Aikido. That's exactly what Aikido is. And we talk about Aikido. One of the high level instructors of Shihan says, you know, when someone's attacking you, they're coming from a place of suffering that we know nothing about a place of fear, a place of suffering. And so it's, it's, it behooves you to have compassion for this person. And you have compassion by saying, just like we were talking about with the toddler, you have compassion for, by saying, I'm not gonna let you harm me because if you harm me, you're cutting yourself off from your own humanity. You're cutting yourself off from the divine. You're, you're making it impossible for us to connect as humans, which is after all while, we're here. And that idea where you said, nah, not today, that's exactly the attitude of an Aikidoka. Pleasant and, you know, gently loving and, and hum you know, every, uh, all Aikidoka have really good humor. We're good humored people, right? We have a sense of humor. We, you know, we laugh and there's this sense of, um, yeah, we're here for each other. And there was a, a high level sensei who studied with those sensei, studied with where he was Shiba. Uh, who said that the attacker is uh, temporarily insane. You have to see this person as temporarily insane, as temporarily out of their mind. What do you do to it with an insane person? You try to calm them down. You try to help them. You try to show them that, that they're safe and they're okay. So this show goes by fast as we've already realized and it is recording this time so we're <laughs> Um, let's talk a little bit about your career. You're a psychotherapist, if I understand correctly. And as we've talked in the past, it's really ironic, or maybe not, that when we're raised in an, an environment that is not pleasant and unstable and, and violent and so on, we turn out to be healers for the most part. Um, yeah, we, yeah, sorry. No, no, we, we become healers or as we were talking, we either become healers or we become perpetrators. And that's, that's the unfortunate thing. Um, and again, we were talking about suffering and anger and rage coming from a place of fear that that fear is from early childhood. That fear is, I'm going to get you before you get me. And so that's why we also have to assume that someone who's attacking is, has been traumatized in some way. I'm of the um, opinion that this is a traumatized society and that everybody has some kind of trauma. And that's why there's so much contention in the world that we're either one-upping each other, but luckily we are. Like you're giving this, this um, podcast for people to see, you know, there's someone in this world who cares about me. There's someone in this world who's trying to be positive, who's trying to lift me up. 
and that's that's your journey in terms of being a healer and we're so lucky to have you that and it's my journey to say I'm going to heal you one-on-one -on -one. I'm going to help I'm going to empower you it's my job to empower you to help you understand your own suffering and why you do the things you do why why you have no confidence why you're um somebody who tries to overcome other people and help people empower themselves so they're not either cowering or bullying but just finding in themselves that truth and that peace well what i love about what i love about this whole conversation is the fact that i'm i'm sitting here thinking about all of the phases the variations of me as i've grown and healed and purged and and reinvented and recreated and all of that process of, of being a human um but aikido so I've, I've always been scrappy. I've always been the one who I will be the first to tell you where to go and how to get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be the first to show you how to get there. <laughs> you know, and, and it's not that I'm a mean person. It's just, it's a protective barrier. You're not going to hurt me and I'm going to make sure. Right. It's kind of like a gate, a protective barrier. And right. as, I'm, as I'm chewing over the, the words that you're using with a keto, it's kind of a scrappy thing to do, but in a very positive and gentle and compassionate way. So you're using the same energy, you're using the same tool set, it's just a little shinier and softer. Right, and so exactly. So you are, um, how did one Shihan put it? Uh, Shihan is just a very high level instructor who said, um, Aikido is teaching someone that silence, that violence is self-destructive and we do this without destroying them. So to teach someone that violence is, so, is self-destructive, we really have to set a boundary. We have to, Aikido is so much about saying no, right? It's about saying no. It's also about saying yes and giving people very few choices, right? Saying you're either going to um, connect with me in a positive way or I'm going to make sure that we connect in a positive way and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't go another way that's the skill so i think it's so important my teachers are very precise in their technique they're very decisive in their technique and they teach um like the sensei i study with now says there has to be a period on the end of that sentence not a question mark so if we're doing a technique and he says that's a question mark not a period <laughs> give me an exclamation point we're where you have to be, to, uh, you have to be firm in your technique, or it doesn't work. See, you can be scrappy and classy at the same time, kids. I'm telling you, look at this. <laughs> you have to be. You have to be right. You have to protect yourself. So Aikido is about protection. While we're on the subject, we're protecting ourselves and we're protecting the other person. We're protecting them from harm because if you attack someone, you're going to probably get hurt. And we're, attacking, we're protecting them spiritually because we're protecting them from the, um, uh, I, I don't have the word, we're protecting them from cutting themselves off by hurting another person. And we're all about a community. Uh, I think you and I share that sisterhood that it's very important to be a part of community in a productive, progressive, and healthy fashion. And I love how you were able to um, connect with something that may or may not have been easy at first and you grew into it and you showed up every day and, and showing up sometimes is really hard, especially when you don't have a self-esteem and you think everybody hates you. That is so true. Um, and that's something we've talked about before is that showing up in Aikido was a little bit easier because um, the people were so loving and so kind, but that still didn't make it easier. Uh, for me, except for the fact that it was, it was easier to come. It was easier. It was a sense of, I'm not disliked here. People here want to see me. That dawned on me slowly over about six months. You have to trust it. it. Right. It took, it took a while to trust. But even in, in situations where I didn't feel safe, I still showed up. You talked about being scrappy. We have that in common. Show up. We're like, um, I double dare you mm -hmm. to make me quit and that's you know i think we have that in common as well i think it's, I think it's just something from being abused so severely right. as a child you know my my um largest memory that's still it just flabbergasts me as an adult because i i can't imagine doing this to my child but 
I grew up Southern and they were all about lashes. You get 10 lashes, you get six lashes. Right. Well, if I winced or cried while they're whipping me, I would get 10 more. Right. Until the point where I'm, you know, catatonic, like you were mentioning earlier, you don't really have a choice, but at this point you're covered in welts and blood. So you might as well just let it, you know, you get dissociated. You dissociate. Yeah, you shut down. To. Right. Um, but what I love, uh, my point, there was a point there. Did you catch the point? Well, no. we're talking about shutting down and we're talking about, um, that could go a number of different Good. And I, it's the shutting down part that was really the big point because right. I think that the scrappiness comes from not wanting to shut down. We, we will right. do anything uh, right. primordially to survive because we, and that little sliver that we all have is screaming, you want to live, you want to survive. Right. And um, we've come up with creative ways in doing that. And I think Aikido and any martial arts really I think it's a great way to focus that energy in a productive way instead of just running like a crazy orc off of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, I agree. And um, the thing about the orcs is they're not about peace. And ultimately, all martial arts are about peace if you get to the high levels and you're doing it correctly, that they're about uh, do, budo. It's about protection. It's about keeping the peace. And Aikido is just a, a martial art that um, shows that, that that's what we practice. We practice that part so that that's what you know from the beginning. So as we wrap up, because this, the sand is flowing fast, talk to us quickly about your black belt experience, because I thought that just really, like for me, I had tears in my eyes when you told me the first time, like, yes, get it, girl. So when I trained for black belt, it was a very difficult experience. I wanted to give up the whole time. I had a very devoted instructor. I still have him as my instructor. This was uh, 10 years ago, exactly. Summer 2011. And um, he, and I was crying. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And he said, this is about what you are willing to do, not about what you can or can't do. And then he said, Black belt is about how you are going to conduct yourself as a human being. And that really, that was a big turning point in my life and really sh shot me up to a great higher level of spiritual experience. So I feel very fortunate about that. I love it. So where do we find more information about you? Because it's time. Okay, so you can go to my website, rachelklingauthor.com. You can learn more about Aikido. You can buy my book. And you can contact me for any reason. I, I would love to con to exchange with listeners and readers. RachelKlingAuthor.com. Beautiful. You, my friend, thank you for your patience through this uh, journey. But I just, hand, hats off to you, young lady. You kick some ass and you're not taking names. And you don't need to because you're sitting back in the flow. <laughs> yes, I think, we, I think we both uh, connected today. And I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Take care. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty. I'm Rusty, and I get to do this. I get to travel around the world meeting amazing people who are sharing their stories about survival and thriving and renegotiating what life means to them. I absolutely think Rachel should get the bronze star of ass battery. Battery ass, bat, bat, assery. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, stuck today. Mm. Anyway, know that you're loved, know that you're beautiful. Make sure you go out and do something kind for somebody today. You never know what you and your presence brings until you change somebody's life. And that's what I aspire to do. I want to help give you tools, tips, and tricks to better your life and to help you along your journey, whatever that may be. I can't walk the path for you, but I can definitely throw a water bottle at you and tell you a bad joke. That's about it. Anyway, forever yours, your personal inspirational cheerleader. I'll talk to you next time.